Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. And I'm Kayla Kelly. And we're gonna do a little joint video session this time. And uh, the plan is in this video to sort of show you how you can clean up a mesh if things get a little messy. Kayla's been learning Blender and I'm gonna let her explain briefly sort of what she was working on and kind of what happened. So I'm trying to build this cartoon style house and the roof was initially a plane, a flat plane, and I subdivided it per the instructions to make it into a roof. And I don't, I don't actually know exactly how I got to the point that we're at currently, but something happened when I added thickness to the roof and was extruding it and rotating it and pulling edges down. And I got all kind stuff that Adam's showing on the screen. I got extra vertices. I had extra edges that I was deleting. It just was really messy. And so I came to Adam and I said, I don't know what to do. Should we start over? Like, should I just delete this whole thing and start over? Or is there a way to fix this? And so I figured I would show her how to do it. And now we're gonna show you some techniques of how you can clean up a mesh. So first of all, I noticed, well, when you have it in object mode, you can't even tell anything's wrong. So it might be good enough for your purposes to just leave it alone. But I'm guessing that at some point you're gonna to wanna to clean up a mesh like this. Well, I needed to add more stuff to it as well. Right. And when I was trying to alter it in my next steps on the tutorial I was following online, I couldn't do what the next steps were because my mesh had gotten mess, messed up. Okay. So what I like to do in a situation like that is try to sort of manipulate the faces a little bit and figure out what's going on. Just like, first pass just to kind of figure out where the problems are. So I might grab a vertex and move it around like this. So I'll click on it and then I'll hit G and that allows me to move it around. And what that does is that tells me if there's any other like weird faces that are attached. So in this case, this is behaving how I would expect it to. But right here, when I move it, suddenly I'm seeing faces that weren't there or weren't visible before. So we basically want to remove these vertices here that don't need to be there, but you also want to remove the faces. And you can always undo what you've just done by right-clicking. Like when I hit G, then I can right-click and it'll snap back to where it was. So there's some tools that can help for this sort of thing. So one of them is up here in this menu here, the overlays. You can turn on statistics. And what this shows here is in the scene on the on the right here you've got three objects 32 vertices 44 edges and then you've got how many are selected right now so actually i guess it looks like the vertices are just for this object so i just hit a to select all of them i've got 32 vertices but if we look at this there should be four plus four here another four plus four so we should only have 12 vertices which means Somehow there's a lot of vertices in here that don't belong here. <laughs> and we can kind of use this tool to help us out. So right now, um, one thing that's a problem, if you're not in x-ray mode, then you can't see all of the vertices. And if you select them, like right now, I'm going to select just this one. It's only going to show one vertex selected. But if I switch into x-ray mode and do the same bounding box here, now I've got two vertices selected. So one of them is has to go, basically. In this case, we got another two, and we got two here, I'm guessing, and two here. So I'm just looking here and seeing how many vertices are in these places. So we can remove some of these vertices here, and there's probably more than one way to do this, but here's one way you can do it. You select one, you can actually see something that's happening weird there. You can see that it's white and selected, but if I scrolled out, it actually becomes yeah. black. That's because the other vertex is kind of fighting for which one gets to be visible, and it's just kind of a random choice as to which one shows up. But what I'm going to do is hit G, and I'm going to move this one over, and then I'm going to uh, try and select this other vertex. You see here how I have the two orange 
Um, that shows the edges that the vertex is connected to. We want to get the one that's connected to this vertex right here. So I'm going to select it again. Mm. And now you're seeing a different vertex. And I'm going to pull this one out here. Um, now I'm going to try and get the other two here. So I'm going to select, just click it twice, and then it selects the different one. So I'm pulling that one out. And it looks like I got it first try that time. So now I've got these. And if I switch back into here, you can see what ended up happening there. <laughs> there is a, an extra loop of faces here that we want to get rid of. So what we can do is just select these. I'm going to shift, hold down shift and select these. And I'm going to just delete these vertices. And oh. now this face is, these faces are completely gone which is maybe alarming, but in this case, it's going to be really easy to repair this. So what I'm going to do is check to just make sure that there's nothing weird going on here too. So let's go back into x-ray mode and do a box select. Only one vertex, only one vertex. I'll just do both at the same time, only two vertices. So it looks like this face is okay. But there's some other vertices and an edge that I missed, apparently, right. hanging yeah. out. So what we'll do, just since we're here, we can just co just uh, collect these right now. We've got eight vertices right here that oh somehow gosh. just got uh, <laughs> collected there. So we can delete them just by doing X, and then we'll delete the vertices. So that, that really improved things quite a bit. I'm going to leave these here for a second because I want to show something else, another way that we can kind of repair this. And what we'll do now is I'm going to switch into edge mode and I'm going to shift select this entire box right here. I'm going to shift select each of these. And just be careful that you only get these four up here and these four over here in this case. And you can do this with more than four, as long as you have a matching number between them. What we're gonna do is sort of just bridge these loops and we're gonna create that face just like the other side had. So we've got eight selected total. We're gonna go to edge, bridge edge loops. And now we have this face. These faces were all created for us. And now we've got two sides that look just like you'd expect them to on the house. Um, if I select everything, so I hit A, we still have 20 vertices when we should have 12. So what we're going to do here, this is another little technique. If you want to, basically we're going to do select, and we're going to select everything that's connected. So if we go to select and select linked, the shortcut is control L. Now we've got 12 vertices selected. So what's ended up happening is we've got basically everything except for those loose uh, points that were left behind. And if we uh, switch into yeah. vertex mode, now you can see that those points are left right there. So there's eight vertices right there in that spot that looks like two. Yes. And so we can, at this point, we can uh, go to select invert, and then it'll select everything that wasn't selected before. Mm. We can click or hit X to delete, and then we'll just delete those vertices. And now we have, hopefully, um, you can sometimes grab like a face or something and just make sure everything seems to be moving around good. So I'm just hitting G, and then once it seems left, right, I'm just doing right click. So that's kind of the simple um, fix here for how to get this back to the shape that we want. It's possible that some other things got a little messed up too. And so I want to just see if I want to test a couple things really quick. So I'm going to go into edge mode and select this. And I like to go to the item transform in local space and just check here. So this is along the x axis. I want to see if these are lined up. And they do appear to be lined up. I, what I'm looking at right here is this x value here to see, to make sure that these are that lined it matches. Up. Yeah. This one too, it does, it does match. What I wanted to show is basically if you had two that were off from each other, like let's say I move this one just a little bit forward and you had one that was kind of crooked. There is a way to 
fix this, what you can do, let's say you want this edge to be in line with this edge, but you know that it's, it's off by a little bit. What you can do is you can move your cursor to this. So I'm going to do Shift S. That's um, a cursor, uh, gives you some controls for your cursor. I can move my cursor to the selected. And what that does is that's going to allow me to use that as my pivot point. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to select this. I need to change my, uh, my pivot point to the 3D cursor. And then what I'll do is I will scale this along the x-axis. And if I were to go bigger, it would get worse. But if I go all the way down to zero, what's going to end up happening is it's going to scale it down to be in line with the cursor. And I'm going to do that with a much bigger, like just to show again. So if I scale this along the x-axis only, so I'll hit x, if I bring it down all the way to zero, it's basically just scaling it to get to that spot. So I hit zero, enter, and then now I've got this now aligned aligned. thing. Yeah, so I've got here now this, um, the x value here and the x value here are the same again. So I thought that might be an issue, and so I was hoping I would have to solve it, but I just made it an issue so that I could solve it. Anyway. <laughs> so those are just a few techniques. There's probably hundreds more techniques that you can use to um, fix issues like this, but that's just a, some simple ways that you can manually fix some vertices. Yeah, I think that statistics menu is incredibly helpful and something that should be just always up on Blender. When you open that up and showed that to me, I was like, why is that not always there? That should just always be default there because it's so helpful. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess just because you end up getting so much on your display at once yeah. that it can get a little overwhelming. So um, not with my simple house, but maybe later. Of course, of course. <laughs> All right, everyone, hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, it's completely new format for us, so definitely let us know what you thought in the comments. We'd really appreciate your feedback. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you.